In this video, I'm going to minimize z, which is equals to 5x1 plus 4x2, subject to the constraints 3x1 plus 2x2 greater than or equals to 5, 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equals to 7, x1 and x2 greater than or equals to 0, and the x1 and x2 there being integers. And uh, to solve uh, this uh, minimization problem, I'm going to use uh, the branch and bound method. So we are given this integer programming problem, and I'm saying integer programming because we are having a constraint which is saying that the variables x1 and x2 there are integers. To solve uh, integer programming problems, we can start by relaxing this integer constraint. That is to say, we treat it as if it's not there, so that what we have left is just an ordinary linear programming problem. And uh, to solve uh, the linear programming problem, I will use uh, the graphical method. So I will look at uh, this constraint there, 3x1 plus 2x2 greater than or equals to 5. To plot a line representing that constraint, I will look at when x1 equals to 0, we would have uh, our x2 would be equals to 5 divided by 2. And when x2 is equals to 0, we would have our x1 being 5 over 3. So I can use these points to plot the line. So I will have my x-axis where I will write my x1, then put a 0 there, and then write the x1, and then on the vertical axis I will put the x2 there, then put the point 0, 5 over 2. So that's the point there. And then put the point 5 over 3, 0. It's there. Then join those two using a straight line. So we have that's the line which represents that uh, highlighted constraint. I move on to the next constraint, the 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equals to 7. When x1 is equals to 0, we have x2 is equals to 7 over 3. When x2 is equals to 0, we have uh, x1 is equals to 7 over 2. So I will plot um, these points on the graph there, and we would have uh, the 0, 7 over 3, that's there. Then uh, the point 7 over 2, 0 is this one here. And then join those two points using a straight line, so we have uh, that. I now go on and shed the feasible region, is the region which satisfies all constraints and in this case, we will see that this is the feasible region there. So after shading the feasible region, we then go on and label the corner points of the feasible region. So I have point A and a point B and then point C. And then we go on and evaluate the objective function at the corner points of the feasible region. So I will draw a table and write my points, the point A. At the point A here, we are having the intersection of uh, these two lines. And uh, to get uh, the coordinates there, we would have to solve uh, these two simultaneously. And then we'll go to the point B and then point C. And then I'll write my x1, my x2, and then the objective function set. So I said to get the coordinates of the point A, we are solving uh, these two simultaneously. And we would get that our x1 will be 1 over 5, our x2 will be 11 over 5. And the next step now is to substitute these values into the objective function here so that whatever z is equal to 5 over 5 plus 11 times 4 divided by 5, which gives us a 49 over 5. At point B here, we are having our x1 is a 5 over 3, our x2 is a 0. Substitute these values into the objective function here and we would have that our set is equals to 25 over 3. Go on to the next point, the C. We see that our x1 is equals to 7 over 2, our x2 is a 0. Then substitute these values into the objective function there, then we'll see that the set there is 35 over 2. This is a minimization problem. Was I having minimized there? So we look for the smallest value of set in this column, and that smallest value there is the 25 over 3. So what we are saying is the optimal solution to the linear programming problem is z is equals 25 over 3, which occurs when x1 equals to 5 over 3 and x2 is equals to 0. What we are having here is the optimal solution of the linear programming problem, which we got when we relaxed this integer constraint. But what you want is the x1 and x2 
must be integers. So we'll now go to the next step of now using the branch and bound method so that we can get integer values for x1 and x2. So what we will do there is we select one of the variables on the x1 and x2 whose optimum value, which we call x star j in the linear programming problem, is not integer. In this case, the value that is not integer there is this x1 because that's a 5 over 3. 5 over 3 is not an integer. And then we go on and eliminate the region, which is greater than the flow value of x star j, but less than the flow value of x star j plus 1. So I will write uh, this uh, inequality there. We are saying the flow value of x star j is less than x j is less than the flow value of x star j plus 1. In this case, we said the value which is not integer is this one, this x1. So our x1 is the one that we are saying, that's the xj. So for this part here, we'll be taking the flow value of 5 over 3. And here, we are saying the flow value of 5 over 3 plus 1. So what we we'll then have is, uh, we'll put now the x1 where we have xj. So we we'll have the flow value of x1 is less than the x1 is less than the flow value of x1 plus 1. The flow value of 5 over 3 is a 1. And the flow value of 5 over 3 plus 1 to be 1 plus 1, which gives us a 2. So we are talking about the region, which is greater than 1, but less than 2. So in, in our graph, we go on and uh, write uh, the point. We are looking at the variable that was not integer is the x1. So we are on this x is here. So we put our 1, because we are excluding the 1. So we have the 1 there, and then we go on and put a 2 there, and then I plot the 2. So what we are saying is, inside this feasible region, we are excluding the region which is between 1 and 2. So if I exclude that region, which is between the 1 and 2 here, what we would have, we would remain with this feasible region there. I have just excluded the feasible region which was in between. So we now have a new feasible region which has a corner points A there and another corner point B and another corner point C, another corner point D, a corner point E, a corner point F. So we now have those corner points and we now want to evaluate the objective function at those corner points that I have labeled. So I will draw a table and write my points. So we have a point A, point B, point C, point D, point E, point F, and then our x1, x2, then the z, the objective function. At uh, the point A, we already found the intersection of those two lines, and we said that x1 was 1 over 5, and x2 was 11 over 5. And substitute these values into the objective function, we get z is equal to 49 over 5. At the point B, here we are having the x1 is equals to a 1. So if we substitute x1 equals to 1 into this uh, constraint there, because that's the one which is cutting that line at the point B, we would get that uh, the x2 is 5 minus 3, which gives us a 2, then we divide by 2, then we get a 1. So we have uh, x2 is a 1. Substitute these values into the objective function here, we would get uh, the z is equals to 9. At point C, we are having the x1 is a 1 because we are along that line there. And we are now looking at the intersection of uh, the line x1 equals to 1 with uh, this uh, uh, this constraint there. So we are saying x1 equals to 1 there. For the x2, we would have 7 minus 2, which gives us a 5, then divide by 3. So we would have our x2 being 5 over 3. Then substitute these values into the objective function, and we have 35 over 3. We go on to the point D there. Point D, we are having our x1 is a 2. And at point D is uh, intersecting with uh, this uh, constraint there. So we are putting x1 equals 2. So we we'll have a 7 minus 4, which gives us a 3. And then um, divided by the 3, so we we'll have x2 equals to 1. Then substitute these values into the objective function here and we would have our set is equal to 14. At point E, 
we are having our x1 is equals to 2 and our x2 is a 0. Then substitute these values into the objective function here. We would have that uh, the set there is equals to a 10. I now go on to the next part, the f here. We are having x1 is 7 over 2 and x2 is a 0. We substitute these values into the objective function here and we have uh, 35 divided by 2. Our problem, we are saying it's a minimization problem. So in this column of uh, the z, we look for the smallest value. The smallest value there is this 9. So what it is saying, the optimal solution now is z is equals to 9, which occurs when x1 equals to 1 and x2 equals to 1. So that's the solution that we are having now. But this solution, as we can see, is now integer. The values of the x1 and x2 are integers as required by this constraint here. So what you have found there, this is the solution of the integer programming problem.